In this screencast, I want to talk about the qualitative analysis of the logistic model, uh, where I'm calling, uh, again, N, the carrying capacity. And what we're putting together is a model that describes, among other things, uh, the population growth in an environment that has a limited, uh, has some limitation on the amount of species that can live in that environment. The two assumptions that go with this model say that uh, population P of T is, when population uh, P of T is small relative to the carrying capacity, the rate of growth of the population is proportional to its size, just as we saw when we uh, talked about the U.S. Census data and a simple model of unlimited growth. I'm using the uh, approximation dpdt, the rate of growth of the population is approximately proportional to uh, its size. Uh, it won't be exactly equal in this case, but uh, when uh, p is small relative to n, it will be. The second two assumptions say that when p is uh, bigger than the carrying capacity, if the population is bigger than what the, the environment can support, it has to make sense that the rate of growth of the population decreases. It can't support any more than n species if for some reason we were above it. Uh, we'd have to see a decrease in the size of the population. If the population uh, is smaller than the carrying capacity, then we expect to see continued growth. It might not be that fast, but it'll continue to grow as long as we're below the carrying capacity, the population has the ability and the population must get bigger. Putting these two equations uh, together, these two assumptions together, we have what is known as the logistic equation. It has this shape, this form, k times p, 1 minus p over n. It takes a little while to start to feel comfortable, logistic equation or model. Okay. And uh, and I just want to verify that, that we see both of the assumptions built in here. When p is small, when p is small relative to n, so, for example, the population is 10, and the carrying capacity is a million, 10 over a million, small number. Uh, one minus such a small number is approximately 1, and we see that our rate of growth is approximately k times p. So our population growth rate will be approximately the same as the unlimited growth. Um, it looks like it's a rate of growth that's proportional to the size of the population as long as p is small relative to n. If p is ever bigger than n, then this would be a number bigger than 1. 1 minus something bigger than 1 is a negative number. kp is positive. Negative times positive is negative. We see that our rate of growth is negative. So when we're bigger than the carrying capacity, this equation reflects the fact that our rate of growth would be negative. If p is smaller than n, or smaller than the carrying capacity, then uh, dp dt needs to be positive. And if p is smaller than n, this ratio is smaller than 1. 1 minus something smaller than it is positive. kp is positive. Again, we see that our rate of growth is positive. This is an equation we can actually solve analytically. It is going to require a uh, the method of partial fractions, we, we're not going to take that step, but we are going to continue to analyze how these solutions behave. And um, the first thing to observe is that, uh, I think this was said in class, that there are two constant solutions. The function p of t equals 0 satisfies this equation. If I have no population, it or zero species in my population, it is satisfied. Its derivative, of course, is zero. And if I plug zero in for my function, I get zero on my right-hand side as well. This solves my differential equation. 
as does this constant function. If my population for all time is equal to the carrying capacity, uh, it also solves our differential equation, and these are called equilibrium solutions. They solve the differential equation. However, they never change value, and therefore they stay at an equilibrium uh, value. If we start at zero, we stay at zero. If we start at the carrying capacity, we stay at the carrying capacity. What about the rest of the solutions? What if we're not at zero or n? How do we use um, qualitative reasoning to understand what's going on with this equation? So uh, here I've written out the logistic equation once again. But you'll see that I'm equating it. I'm calling this right-hand side of the differential equation some function in terms of the variable p. And looking at it more closely, we see that this function is a quadratic function. It has a negative coefficient in front, a graph of f of p, would look something like this. There are two values that make it 0, at 0 and at n. Oh, one second, I'll, I'll call this my n. This is my p-axis, and this is my f of p-axis. And I'm simply showing you the right-hand side of the differential equation. This graph governs the slopes of p, and in a separate graph, a more significant, important one, but one that we need f of p to derive, this will be my time axis, and this will be my p of t axis. So the things that I draw on this graph are solutions, and two known solutions are the constant p of t is equal to 0, that's a solution, and the constant p of t is equal to n. And you'll see that we use equilibrium solutions to sort of frame how the other solutions must behave. Uh, in a future section, we're, we're going to discuss the fact that solutions in these situations uh, cannot cross one another. And, um, and so let's see what's happening. So I've discussed a population of 0 and a population of n. But what happens, what does the model say happens if we start? Uh, I'll draw it in red. If we start at some initial population here. So that would, since this is my population model at time 0, let's say we're here at some initial population p0. So this, this takes a little getting used to. I'm going to just take a dotted line up to here. Okay. If my population is p0, f at p0 is a positive number, meaning that my slopes are positive, saying that dp dt is increasing for that population. Well, if dp dt is increasing, it means that my population is moving down the line and getting larger. These values of f of p simply indicate the steepness of the slope. They're all positive values. The slope seems to be steepest here, and as it's going to turn out, that's always going to be exactly half the carrying capacity. And that has to do with our properties of quadratic functions. Where does the maximum occur? Uh, it's related to these two zeros, and it's going to be exactly in the middle of them. So 1 half n will be our Maximum, I might as well write that. Not a fact that we need to take advantage of at the moment, but, but a significant one. And, uh, and I'll, I'll try to put some dotted lines up here. So these are the largest values of f of p, and they only distinguish themselves because um, slopes will be steepest there. But if I start at some positive population, bigger than 0 but smaller than the carrying capacity, this curve is telling me that my slopes continue to be positive until I get to n. With 
with the largest value being here at n over 2. So I'm also going to make a note, just put a little line there at n over 2. And then in red, I'm going to draw roughly, my populations are, my slopes are positive. The slope is steepest right around here. They continue to be positive, but they get small, they get smaller. The slopes get smaller, even though the values rise as they approach the carrying capacity. This is what I mean by a qualitative analysis. Had I started, I'll do it in blue, I'll just draw one other uh, here as my initial population, so a little bit higher, let's say P0 here, I would expect to see the same thing. My steepest slope would come uh, much sooner in this case, and then my slopes stay positive but approach the carrying capacity. On this side, suppose my population uh, were over here. My initial population were on this side. Let me extend this quadratic. On this side it says to me, well if I start with a population somewhere up here, let's do it in blue. So I start with an initial population here. Well this information says to me that the slopes are, are all negative at this point. When I plug in this value of p0 into f of p, I'm getting a negative value if f of p is negative, if this side is negative, then my slopes are negative. And I see, if I were to draw it, my slopes are decreasing, approaching the carrying capacity. Okay. Below in this region, uh, down here where populations are negative, have no relevance to us. But between 0 and the carrying capacity and above the carrying capacity, I can draw these graphs with confidence, understanding how the right-hand side behaves. This is a skill you'll get better at as the term goes on. But this is all I mean by a qualitative view of the solutions of this differential equation, of this logistic equation. I can say with all certainty, anything that starts in this region will have this form. It'll continue to grow, reach some steepest value, and then level off with positive slope, but approaching the value of n. And if I start above, I, I always have a negative slope approaching the value of n and never crossing it. And that's, that's all we mean by qualitative analysis. Thank you.